Did that lead to Keith Richards? Actually, less. The every okay. like all roads, you know, for me go go back to, go less. Back to uh -huh. less kind of because uh, Keith came in to uh, like one of the gigs one night, and um, actually his mom first showed up like early in the afternoon, Doris, mm -hmm. and um, and Les always wanted a closed sound check. Okay. Nobody could really be there. You know, he didn't even want like the help from the. He didn't even want like the, the waiter, the mm, wait staff. Okay. He wanted well, to. He, we we okay. would get we would get there like hours before the wait staff would even show up. Mm -hmm. We'd show up noon every week, and we'd have like a seven hour sound check wow. every week. How? Every week, <laughs> you know. And then after the gig, three in the morning, when he got home, he'd call you up and tell you everything that was that didn't go right, and like what happened with this and blah blah. You know, he really he, he was serious. You know, really scrutinizing. He really cared. Wow. And um, but uh, but there was this elderly couple. Like when we walked in at noon, we'd get there at noon, mm -hmm. and the show was until eight o'clock. And they would open the doors, you know, six thirty or something right. for you know dinner and mm -hmm. pre-show. And um, so there was this couple there, and it turned out, and, and I was like, and Les wasn't saying anything. He wasn't saying, get the heck out yeah, of here, right. you know? And um, so I was like, I was curious who they were, and it turned out, he said, oh, that's, somebody said, that's Keith Richards' mom. And I said, well, you know, there's no wait staff here. We've got to get, they can't sit there for the next seven hours, you know? So, you know, got, got Doris some tea, and, mm -hmm. you know, they hung out. And, um, and then later on, like, Keith showed up. We, okay. didn't, we didn't know Keith was going to show up. And... Uh, so he sat in, and, um, and he was really, really cool. And uh, and he was like, "Hey, man, you know, give me your phone number. You know, maybe we can jam." And I was like, Psh, "Anytime, anytime." You know, so gave him my number, and um, and like on like kind of regular Keith Richards time frame, I get a phone call like a year later, like one whole year, you know. And um, he says, "You want to come up to uh, you know come up to the house?" So we'd go up and hang out at his pad. Mm -hmm. And for about three years, for about three days, three days a week, we'd be kind of camping out at his house, and uh, you know, doing a lot of playing, and you know, got stacks of, you know, I think I have like 22 CDs filled with like demos that we did, wow. Wow. which okay. which there's like a lot of really good stuff, which I think will See some. The light of day? Yeah. I hope so. There's like a, we had some great sessions with like Ronnie Spector that were amazing. Wow. And um, I'm they, surprised none of that stuff hasn't come out. Now this is going. This is you know it's like we're going back yeah. you know, fifth, yeah, I mean not 15 years but uh -huh. you know I think it was like early 2000s you okay. know before before the Stones started going out because Keith wants to play. He yeah, just, that's it, yeah, he's like loves playing. So mm -hmm. you know we were up there with uh, it was George Roselli and Blondie Chaplin and, yeah, and it was the, like a regular. Side with the Stones, it was yeah. a regular you know week kind of weekly thing and we. You know, drive up to Connecticut yeah. and, uh, and basically just camp out and have fun. Now you you were on his last record though, the one that just came out. I got on. I ended up on a, a tune or two. Yeah. Because I saw your hands in the video. Yeah, right? my hands are in the video. Oh, where, where's the ball? You know, they were they, yeah, That's my hands. <laughs> that's my so. Uh, yeah, that was. Um, yeah, I just I. You know, he was working on that record with uh, Steve for a while, for a while. and yeah. it was just them. It was just those two, and they just yeah. had guest people. Okay. And um, and you know, they wanted some, you know, upright because Keith played bass on the whole record, basically. Right, right. You know, almost everything. Yeah, so yeah, everything. Uh, I did some like string overdubs, uh -huh. like some. Uh, he kind of got me into. Um, he was like super interested in these viola da gambas and stuff. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, you, know, you know, nobody really knows that about Keith, but he's got a real. He loves. Baroque music and mm -hmm. you know real crazy about Vivaldi and all, and um, and there's like this famous movie uh, all about these gamba players, one of Ger Gerard Depardieu's first movies, and mm -hmm. he was really fascinated with it. So when I was on the road with Ricky, in in when I was in France, I found a whole bunch of gambas and I started like kind of because I knew he liked it, and I just <laughs> I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm gonna like check it out, you know. And nobody wanted them. You know, it was like you could get gambas for a dime a dozen. So I ended up with like a bunch of gambas. And he was like, you know, he's like, you know, how's the gambas going? You know, and I was like, I said, you know, I'm, you know, 
not that great. <laughs> and he says, you think you can bring him to the session next week? You know, I was like, I'll try, you know. And, um, you know, so I ended up, there's actually a bunch of, uh, in one song, there's like a lot of Viola da Gamba on. I have to go back. And yeah, and yeah. it's pretty, you don't even really know what it is. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like weird, you know, yeah. uh, you know, unusual sounds that you don't even really know what it is. Wow. And, um, but I ended up playing bass and playing some gamba, so yeah. it was cool. You know, went in for two days, and he's, he's an amazing, super cool guy. Yeah, I, 